All right, so we talk a lot about training and how to train. Let's talk about what we use to train with, okay? Train on, okay? Targets, real size targets, real distances. Anything else? I don't know, ain't gonna do a whole lot for you, okay? Um, you know, shooting little circles at three yards. Eh, I don't know, unless that's the game you're gonna play, you know? So real size targets, real distances. Uh, when you staple, your targets, yeah, staples, uh, the clips and all those things, man, they're gonna get shot, okay? They're gonna get shot, they're gonna break, gonna be a pain in the butt to replace. You'll probably get cut replacing them as well. Okay, staples, when you do staples, do the half inch staples, okay? The longer staples, okay? Um, they may be a little bit harder to get your target off when you're done, but they're harder for the wind to blow the target off too, okay? Um, you know, you do your, uh, I like USPSA targets. You know, they're, they're a good practical target for a whole lot of stuff. You need target stands that are 18 inches wide or have slots 18 inches wide. Okay, when, speaking of wind, all right, when uh, you put your sticks in there, five foot sticks, okay? I know these, these sticks, these little one by two strips, they come in eight foot sections, right? A lot of times you think like, okay, cool. I'll get the eight footers, I'll cut them in half, and then I got more sticks. Now, what you got is nothing, okay? Um, what you want is five foot sticks, okay? You do five foot sticks, you table, staple the targets up, even with the top of the stick. Now, you get to present the gun, you get training reps of presenting the gun in relationship to what you're looking at that's pretty close to most of what you're gonna do in the practical applications of shooting, okay? Uh, if you do four foot sticks to get all this to go, oh, and by the way, with a five foot stick and the target stapled even with the top of it here, like so-ish, you got really good support. You got that aimability thing, okay? That's a word, I think. Um, plus, you got really good support for your target. Wind's not gonna rip it off, it's not gonna fold over, whatever. If you try to do the same thing, work the same height with a four foot stick, your targets are flimsy or they're really low to the ground. Um, really low to the ground also starts causing some issues with making sure bullets go into berms and not hitting the ground and launching over berms, okay? Um, yeah stapling the target up, all right, with the sticks all the way out on the edge, okay? Um, what we see sometimes in this, man, I've, I've been doing shooting and training shooting almost every day for a little over 15 years. I've seen all sorts of weird stuff. I uh, figured out some ways along the way to, uh, to make your targetry last and make it easier to train, okay? Um, if you end up stapling the target to the sticks and the sticks are kind of like right in here, well, what do we want to shoot at, right? You've heard me talk about it before. If you've listened to any of my stuff, I think, you know, we should start off uh, any shot sequence with looking at the middle of the highest scoring portion of the target we have available to us. The largest highest scoring portion of the target we have available to us, right? With this USPSA target, that A zone right there is worth five points anywhere you hit it. This A zone is worth five points anywhere you hit it. This is easier, man. So I would say start your vision, or start a shot sequence with your vision in the middle of this area, okay? If you start looking there, you, know, you got the whole mind thing going there, your eyes will bring, will tell your mind to use the tools it has available to present the gun to what you're looking at, okay? So this is the part of the target we wanna hit, okay? If we do the right things visually and have the right mindset, most of our hits are gonna be in here, okay? And the edge hits are out in here, okay? If you put your sticks in this area, especially this area for a lot of right-handed shooters, your sticks are gonna get shot in half, okay? I'm not saying that bad shooters won't end up shooting these sticks, all right? How does that happen? If this is a target and a shooter hits over here or over there a lot to a point that they break the sticks. Only two ways, man. Either they aim the gun there or they push the gun when they shot. Very common thing, okay? Unfortunately, if you don't shoot enough or you don't train well, that happens, all right? So putting the, the sticks way on the outside or stapling the target way on the outside like that, all the way to the edge of the D, preserves your sticks, okay? Now, here's a pro tip of the day. Um, you gotta move these things around, okay? There's a lot of ways you can do it. You can take the, the stand out or the, the sticks out and pick up the stand or whatever. I'm gonna show you this from, from the backside and then the front, okay? leverage baby okay or just mechanics physics whatever you want to call it grab the sticks and twist them okay that will lock them into the stick all right 
So like so, just grab it and we twist the sticks. Now we can pick this target stand up and move it anywhere we want it, sit it back down and our staples don't get ripped out. All right, cool. Well, oh, more things to train with. Okay, that's some talks on, uh, we talked about real size targets, real distances, five foot sticks, half inch staples. Do the half inch staples, worth it, okay? Maybe a little bit hard for you to take everything down at the end of the day, but you'll usually only have to end up stapling targets once, okay? If you use the little short staples, you're gonna end up stapling, stapling targets multiple times and you ain't training if you're fixing targets. Um, five foot sticks for all the right reasons. Man, worth, if you have a club or you have a, a place that you can train or, you, or you're building your own range or whatever, a very good investment is a few barrels. You know, the 55 gallon plastic barrels in particular, um, they create dimension, okay? Uh, the, the dimension of a 55 gallon barrel, you know, it's a little bit taller, waist height. We use that a lot for uh, some of the exercises. Um, don't use them for cover. Plastic, bull or plastic barrels absolutely do not stop bullets, okay? Use them as vision barriers, okay? For your eyes to have to move around, that's really good work for us. And also use them as obstacles that you have to move your body and guns around to get to other places to shoot. Okay, they're great, great training tools for that, okay? Um, so, man, four or five barrels, 10 barrels, you know, gosh, if you got, if you'll notice a lot of the exercises I put together and a lot of the ones I'm putting together in class there, we'll use five barrels and five target stands. You know, it's a pretty easy investment. And then a few more sticks. We use the sticks for shooting areas and fault lines or whatever. Man, if, uh, you know, with a few material, easy materials like that, fairly reasonable investment and some imagination, you can train everything that you need to do as a practical shooter. Okay, all right, that's what I got for now. So, hey, uh, so I just did that video uh, talking about, you know, target setup and, um, you know, some range materials and all that job. I uh, didn't talk about the target stands, okay? A uh, lot of options out there. I cannot strongly enough recommend you have some steel target stands that weigh something, all right? Um, if the, the base, your target stand has some weight to it, now not, not like, you know, super heavy stuff where it's a complete pain in the ass to move it around, you know, but heavy enough that the wind's not gonna blow your targets over and, and wide enough, you know, so it's not gonna blow your targets over. Huge, okay? Um, if, you know, the, you know, life happens, weather happens, right? You, know, you get a little bit of wind blowing around. If your targets are constantly blowing over, you can't train. If you have super light or wooden target stands and you have to nail them down to keep them from blowing over or you have to prop stuff up on them to keep them from blowing over, okay, cool, now you wanna change. Now you wanna shoot something different. All right, you know and yeah, I mean, we do need to like change around, do some different stuff, you know? Um, well, now you gotta undo stuff. You know, either move a bunch of rocks and bricks and tires or seen all kind of stuff on ranges, man. Uh, or pull stakes out and move it around and set it up. Or when you, then you start zoning out the exercise you want to do. It's like, oh man, really need that target a foot over to the left, but we've already stapled or nailed it down to the ground. Okay, so steel target stands that weigh something, but aren't super heavy, okay? Um, these three out here, um, two of them I made myself. Um, one of them is, you know, a design that I, this is like my last target design, like the evolution of figuring out target stuff or whatever. And I had some commercially made, made by uh, Best Targets. You can check them out and you can find this target stand there. All right, the, um, the evolution of it. Okay, if I, I may go a little bit more deeper into uh, whys on targets. Okay, so I think all of this material is like eighth inch thick, okay? especially like that, uh, that two by four base right there, that two by four box tubing right here, that's a little bit thicker than eighth inch. Um, here's the downside to, uh, you know, the thicker box tubing is the hole itself in the, in the middle of it, smaller like that. Like if you get two by four box tubing, you know, like that and that, they're two inches by four inches on the outside. The inside with the thicker the metal is, the smaller the inside is, okay? So if you use wooden target sticks or two by fours, like for steel on, the, on these, these portions there, they're outside, they get wet, they expand, humidity, definitely have some humidity down here. They expand, you can't get them out, they end up getting broken or whatever. It's a complete pain in the ass to get the little broken pieces out. The thinner gauge metal, um, pretty, I think that's um, 
eighth inch stuff. Um, have to check, check with the uh, best targets, they'll tell you what it is. But the thinner gauge box tubing has plenty of room. Like you can see those, those two by two sticks there or one by two sticks, there's plenty of room there. So those will come out really easy if they get wet. Okay, um, but these target stands are heavy enough. They're big enough, all right, both of them. Uh, this is an old style, just straight up H. Uh, this one's kind of a, a modified H and it's built that way so that you can fold these up. Uh, you can either put four bolts in them or two bolts in them and then you can fold them up easy for, for traveling with them. Um, but these are heavy enough uh, and they're kind of set up too. So if you had the, a two by four there with steel, the weights coming forward on these legs there. Either way is decent design. Um, I think these are like 24 inches there. That's a pretty good, just if you're gonna leave it static out there, that's a pretty good stable base, a pretty good dimension for you, right? Um, 24 inches, that gives you, you know, um, it might be a little bit longer than that. It gives you plenty of room on the front and back to deal with wind. These are a little bit more susceptible to wind that way, but not a ton because they got this weight out here countering, you know, if the wind's coming from this direction, you know, then you got leverage. If the wind's going that direction, you got some counterweight out there. So those work, work out pretty well. Uh, but you saw me move these around earlier with that trick I showed you with uh, turning in on the sticks there. These aren't heavy to move around, okay? Um, same with those, same technique there. Um, I've shot some places where they'll use like quarter inch thick metal uh, for those, for the bases. And yeah, dude, the wind ain't blowing them around, but you get a damn workout in, in a day of moving stuff around and setting it up, you know? So these don't suck, okay? They don't suck to move around. They hold the targets nice and work well with the wind. All right, there's some, uh, some more thoughts based on my experiences. Y'all have a good one.